here. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I am super excited to be here with you today because I am one week and one day past my total hip replacement of my right hip and I will be sharing every detail of the last gory seven days and I'm telling you this is the craziest recovery you've ever seen because it's a normal hip replacement recovery plus I came home from the hospital with COVID and I had to quit my carnivore diet which was really kind of interesting so my whole life has been upside down for a week but I'm happy to say I am amazed at the results that I have right now so far I'm up walking without any kind of assistance no walker no cane it was pretty much that way from day one for me it has been truly fantastic and I did want to share my beautiful doctor who I think is fantastic he's of course an orthopedic surgeon his name is Dr. Paul C. Papadimos and he's here at Advanced Orthopedics Associates in Wichita Kansas I'll put his contact information below he did my knee replacement five years ago and I am telling you life changing life changing and I know the hip will be for me as well and before I get into all the details I did want to show you that I have changed out of my sweats and dirty PJs this is my outfit for the day and it is so nice to put on something so nice and bright and springy the outfit and jewelry is pretty much from Amazon and everything is linked below and I did want to thank my sponsor for this video City Beauty and for those of you who followed my channel you know that I have used City Beauty religiously for about the past year and a half now and the thing I really like about this brand is they have advanced skincare science backed by solid research but in addition to other skincare companies where you have to use something for 30 or 45 days to see some results the thing I like about most City Beauty products is that while they do produce a long-term result many of them also give you a short-term boost some plumping some reduction in lines some firming of the skin that is really inspiring for all of us when we start out using something skincare related and I'm here particularly to tell you about a very exciting new product that just launches today on the City Beauty website and this is the City Lips Night Oil and during the course of my recovery I just had this maybe for about the past five days because this is a brand new launch but they sent it to me and I've been using it every evening it is just a beautiful serum that you put on your lips and and I will tell you I have no lipstick on at all I am really getting addicted to the city lips lip plumping products and I'm starting to use them all the time I have some of them in various places all over my house but I was particularly excited about this one and I will I'll, I'll put it on here and it is just a very nourishing plumping oil that has hyaluronic acid and it is scientifically proven to reduce the fine lines and wrinkles around the lips the smokers lines it also has a plumping effect and this little serum is packed with advanced skincare and if you use discount code Beth you could get 15 percent off site wide and that does include the new release and I have not gotten any lip injections for the past two years and I really don't want to do it anymore but I was noticing that my 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 lips were starting to look like shriveled little prunes and I was getting little lines around my lips and it is amazing I have only used this now for about the past four days and I am using it day and night because my lips have been very chapped and just this morning I got up and I looked in the mirror and I had no lipstick on and I'm like what is wrong with my lips they are plumper than they were and I really don't want to get any more lip fillers the last lip fillers I got were two years ago and I just don't like that ducky look and, and I had to put up with that for like the first six months of having the lip fillers and now the lip fillers are mostly gone and so I am really liking the City Lips products because I think it is helping me restore the lost volume this is their City Lips plumping gel and this is in the color clear I wear this pretty much every day all day every day I have it in my purse I have it in my office I have several different vials of it all around my house because I never like to be without it but look I have nothing on my lips except this lip plumper and look oh look how absolutely plump and gorgeous my lips look and one last very important thing about City Beauty which I totally appreciate is it is a 60-day money-back guarantee take a look right there anything that you use you can use it for a full 60 days and get your money back if it doesn't work so you have total confidence in anything you purchase with City Beauty okay let's get into my hip replacement and I did want to say I am 65 years old and I had rheumatoid arthritis in my 40s and I'll link a video below which shows you some of the crazy things I did 
to get rid of my rheumatoid arthritis, but I still do have some lingering joint damage, thus the hip replacement. And I will tell you that with regard to Dr. Papademos, stick around because I have kind of an interesting detail about him that, that I thought was kind of funny, and it's towards the end of the video. So anyway, let's get down to business, and I'll show you my whole first week of hip replacement recovery. Okay, here I am, ready for the surgery. It's about six in the morning, I'm so excited. They've already hooked up my IV and the nurses were so wonderful. They're always so nice. I don't know where they get nurses, but I think they're closer to God. This is Allie. Say hi, Allie. <laughs> He's a man of few words, <laughs> like none. Well, I am so excited. Hopefully I will see you after the surgery with a brand new hip. Okay, I actually came through the surgery and I can't really feel my legs because they're under a spinal block but it was weird because the last thing I remember is them wheeling me up a very cold hallway to the surgery and then them having me sit on the surgery table and bend over because they gave me a spinal block. Um, but that's the last thing I remember and I always liked the sleepy juice so I was you know kind of wanting to experience that because I haven't had a drink in like 25 years so that's always kind of fun for me. I know it's weird but I do enjoy that. And I just had the most wonderfully nice nurse. Everyone is so kind here. Okay, I am back in the room and they offered me coffee and sandwich and jello and all this stuff. And I didn't do the jello or the bread, but they made me a little carnivore kind of a plate, which is really nice. And I have coffee, I'll show you. I'm so excited because I didn't have coffee this morning, obviously. There's Allie over there. And this is a wonderful heated kind of a space blanket. It's amazing. And there's my little carnivore plate. I already had a bite, sorry about that, but it looks good. Turkey and ham and cheese. And there is my coffee. I can hardly wait. Okay, it is like two o'clock in the afternoon, the same day of the surgery. And I have to admit, the only pain I have at this point is from the incision itself, and it hurts. It kind of burns and it hurts. And so I did ask them uh, if they had something more for pain. So I took a lure tab for that. I hope it's the only one I have to take. But anyway, I did want to tell you that I'm kind of surprised by this for some reason, but there is pain. Even though they say this is a lot easier than a knee to get through, it does hurt. Um, so anyway, and also you can't, you can't put a pillow under your operated on leg. You have to leave it flat or you can lie on your side as I'm doing now with the pillow between your legs. And that seems to help. And uh, I think I'm gonna take a nap now. Alan went out to go and get himself some lunch, which was just fine. And I'm watching a YouTube video lying on my side and hopefully I will go to sleep. Okay, there's Allie there and there's my great son, Dilly. Hey. Hi, Dylan. Hey. He came to visit me. His wife, Melanie, unfortunately, has a really bad cold. So she did not, did not come, which is just fine. Okay, it is now 7.15. I had the surgery at eight o'clock this morning and I had kind of an up and down day. I, um, the physical therapist came, walked me around the floor and it was good, except that I'd taken a lower tab. And so I was about to throw up on him after that, unfortunately, it tends to make me a little bit nauseous, but they do say you should keep in front of the pain. I'm doing some little, some little easy exercises with my feet. I'll show you one of them. Basically you do this 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 and as you can tell they could not have chosen a more ugly color there's my walker over there i will get out tomorrow which is great okay i realized i needed to put my little oxygen nose things in because it was causing that da -da 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 -da. it basically tells on me and if i don't have the oxygen in here the nurses come in and put it in because apparently it's important to have that so anyway I am at the end of day one. It was more difficult and more painful than I thought it would be, but I'm sure tomorrow will be much improved. Here we are, it is about, it just passed about 9.30, we're almost 10 o'clock now. And the nurse just came in and walked me into the restroom to help me pee. And it's kind of an indignity, but you have to let them help you pee because you're hooked up to, to the IV machine. So they do need to walk that there for you. And also they just don't want you to do that alone on the first day, just for safety reasons. But anyway, okay, I went in there and I peed 
and I did my teeth brushing, which was good. And then once an hour, and I have to admit, today I've been kind of out of it. So I have not done these exercises as much as I need to, but once an hour, I need to do my Air Life machine and also my little physical therapy stretching exercises. And I'll kind of show you those real quick. Um, the Air Life machine just helps increase your lung capacity, make sure you don't get pneumonia. And so I'm just going to suck it in like this. And then basically you're trying to get the, um, the little ball in there up to, to this and you do it like 10 times. Okay, there we go. I actually just did that a few minutes ago, so I probably really didn't need to do that again yet. And I'm not going to show you all the PT exercises I do, but I'll show you one of each one. And there are four that I do, supposedly once an hour, and I'm really going to get, I'm going to get a lot better about that tomorrow. And so here's my leg, and it's, it's okay that you see it. You're just basically taking your toes like this. Two, two, three, three, two, three. Four, two, three. But you're just bringing it up like this. And if you need your spouse or significant other to help you to hold your leg, which Alan's been doing most of the day, that's fine. Man, I'm doing that well, aren't I, honey? And again, it is very hard to do those at first. I couldn't do them at all. And it is just fine to have the nurse or your spouse or significant other lifting your leg for you because it just gets your legs and your muscles used to making those movements again. So now it is almost 10 o'clock and I just slept for two or three hours before this. So I'll probably be up for a while, which is just fine. But every hour I'm up from now on, I'm going to be using the Air Life breather and you should pause between each one and let that ball go down. I was doing it too fast, go figure. And then you also need to do your PT once an hour. Okay, it is 7.15 in the morning I had my first and only morning in the hospital or evening in the hospital, I guess. And it was really lovely. The, the nurses here were so nice. And when you have to pee in the middle of the night, they have to come and help you. Um, because I was hooked up to an IV, but I realized I am no longer hooked up to an IV. They have to leave the little stint in there. So in case they need to put anything in me in terms of an IV, they can do that. But I am going home today. I guess I'm going to get a visit from the physical therapist before I leave, and then I'll be going home. Alan left, he actually got to spend the night here all night long, on, there's a little couch over there. Let's see if I can show that to you. Yes, there's his little couch, and they have custom fitted linens that work on that couch and pillows and all that stuff, so he did that. But he did go home this morning to take a shower, bless his heart. He is such a good husband, you guys have no idea. If you don't have an Alan in your life, you really need one, he's amazing. But normally I do have trouble sleeping, and I did not have any trouble sleeping at all, probably due to the Lortab for pain. And I have a respect for, for pain pills, but I am going to use them until I don't need them because that helps you be able to do your stretching exercises a lot, a lot better. So anyway, I am just about to order room service, they call it, for my breakfast. And since I'm carnivore now, I'm going to have a ham and cheese omelet well done and two orders of bacon on the side and I'm still on my black coffee, so I'll have that too. Anyway, so far, so good. It is going great, and I'm getting a little more flexible every hour. I still feel a little bit nauseous. And I always do the right one. I'm gonna have to do this opposite, yep. I might actually lower that. Does that feel too high for you? too high, thank you. Baby, is this good or what? It's awesome. Oh man. Is this being held in here? <laughs> Excuse my Is language. Is that still even a little bit too? Maybe it's a little too high. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just when I think I... I didn't even know they adjusted. it. So you do. Good? Yeah. So just try to keep upright as possible. Try and keep upright. And that, you're using that cane perfectly to where it's just kind of acting like your second right leg. Yes. And I've gotten used to it. Yeah. Was your knee done on this side too? Or was no, other left? side. And it was six months of feeling like, oh, maybe I screwed up getting this because oh, I didn't yeah. hurt before the knee. I just got terrible swelling whenever I walk in. Oh. But I, uh, within six months, all of a sudden it was like to the day. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even notice my knee. Oh, awesome. It's the best thing I ever did. Hey, there's Allie. Thank you, Allie. You're welcome. And you just happened to come when I was with my PT. That's nice you got all that stuff. I appreciate it. Can you say you're welcome? You're welcome. <laughs> 
<laughs> he doesn't like me to put him on camera. He's very shy, or at least he's not as outgoing as I am. Okay, this is my breakfast, which I'm excited about. And there it is. It is a ham and cheese, well done omelet with bacon. Yum. And black coffee, I'm still loving that. Apparently, now that the PT has been here, I think I have a visit from my surgeon's office and then apparently I get to go home. And you know, this is about the first time I have felt like I will survive this and like I will end up with no limp and that I will end up feeling good and being able to walk normally. And the PT said that she has a good friend who had not one but two hip replacements within the past year and he went skiing over Christmas. Not that I even want to ski, but, but understanding he did makes me feel really great and very optimistic about my full recovery. This is the first day after surgery, about the middle of the day. We have made it home from the hospital, which was no big deal. They wanted to take me out by a wheelchair and I said, can I use my walker? And they said, yes, so I did that. And we actually left my cane uh, back at the ranch. <laughs> we think we left it in the uh, area before we went into surgery yesterday morning, so Monday we'll have to call and get them, uh, get that back. But the neat thing is, it is giving me the opportunity to walk unassisted. And it's kind of interesting. I'll show you how I'm doing. I think I'm doing really well. Can you get the whole thing, honey? Are you getting the whole thing? Yeah. Including my, my legs and my feet? Okay, now, one thing that's kind of interesting that he told me about, warned me about, is when you're bone on bone, as I was in the right hip, that when they go in and they put the spacer in there and all of that, the new joint, it's going to be bigger because I was worn down on that side. And so I feel, I feel like I'm walking like this, but he said it can take a month to four months to really feel normal about that. I really do feel like this leg is longer now. My right leg is longer. But he said I would, and of course I have to create a story and worry about it a little bit, but I'm sure it will be just fine because he's a great surgeon. Okay, let me show you my walk one more time. I'm so happy. I, I actually think that I was worried I was stooping over a little bit when I walked. I had my, my PT friend Donna, who's another YouTuber, uh, pointed that out to me, and it may be because I was a lot lower on this side, so maybe I'll end up with better posture. This is the end of day two after surgery. And I will say this morning, I felt like a rock star. I am not kidding. First, let me show you how I walk, which is amazing because I don't have a cane and I don't have a walker. It's been sitting over there for the last 48 hours. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? I have to admit, it's pretty amazing. I am so happy that I'm able to walk like that. And on a scale of one to 10, they send me home with a bunch of narcotics, Lortab, and they say, take them if you need them. And I looked up online and you're supposed to take Lortab or something like that if your pain is from an eight to a 10. My pain today is like at a two. It is less than it was before the surgery happened. So it's pretty amazing. And I'm very excited about that, but I will tell you, I overdid it today. I wish I'd shown you me two hours ago because I'd gotten into a nice outfit. I put makeup on. We even went over to Alan's mom's house. And once I got there, I realized I was so tired. And my son and his wife came over this afternoon too. And he said, oh, you're doing so well, mom. You're not coming to work tomorrow? And I'm not, I'm not coming to work for a week. And I just realized that on day two, even if you feel great, you really do need to stay in bed. My doctor had said, stay in bed and once an hour, get up and walk. And I've overdone it today. I'm extremely tired. Darlene gave me a good romance novel and I'm going to go read that. End of day two. This is day three after the surgery. This is Monday night. I had the surgery Friday. And I wish I could tell you that I had a fantastic day. And I did have a couple of visitors bringing flowers. That was really nice. My parents came and another gentleman came and uh, got me a, a gift certificate to a restaurant, which was really, really sweet. Um, but I just feel kind of nauseous all day, and I've been sleeping a lot, watching a lot of bad TV. Uh, this was not my finest moment in terms of my day of healing. I wish I could tell you that it was up like a rocket, but day three does not feel very good. Um, I'm not taking any advanced pain medications. I'm on Tylenol now, 
and the baby aspirin twice a day and the anti-nausea pill that they have that they gave me. Um, but hopefully tomorrow will be better because today has not been good. Okay, this is day four after the surgery and I am not doing very well. And I think it's because I may have COVID. I just did a COVID test and there is one bar that is the control bar and then there's a second bar it was very, 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 very faintly pink. So I hope maybe it is not COVID. It said if it, if you test like that, chances are it is COVID is what it said. But it said, oh no, I've got a sneeze. It said to take the test again. So I'm going to take the test again tomorrow morning. I'm kind of sad because my parents came over to see me and they're in their 80s. And one other gentleman from my church group, one of my church groups came over to see me. And, oh gosh, I just, I, well, I hate to tell them that they may have been exposed to COVID through me. But. Okay, this is day five after this surgery. And again, this has turned into a, a COVID vlog. <laughs> COVID vlog, I don't know. Um, anyway, I am walking just fine. I'm off of all meds in terms of pain meds for the walking. I'm not even taking Tylenol. However, this morning I took another COVID home test and it still showed a faint pink line, but they do say that if you have a faint pink line is the second non-controlled line that you have COVID. And I've called my doctor and I have a telemed appointment this morning at 11.15. It's about 10 o'clock now. And I want to get the Paxlovid to get started on that. If you're over 60, I think, you can get Paxlovid, which really helps with the viral aspects of it, helps cut the virus. So anyway, that's where I am right now. And this explains something too. Ever since I came home from the hospital, I've not really been able to eat carnivore style. I have not. The idea of greasy cheeseburgers just was horrible, and I would make myself eat one. It would taste just terrible, terrible. And I thought, what is going on? I just obviously can't stand carnivore anymore, and so I'll be interested after this. I've not been eating carnivore. I've just been eat eating gluten-free. I've had this desire to have, like, gluten-free, like, bagels. I've been having some of those because I need something on my stomach. I wasn't totally very hungry, but I got a little hungry, and so I ate one of those with some cream cheese, and no problems in terms of the IBS. That's good. I don't know if I'm going back on carnivore after this. I had lost too much weight on carnivore, and so I don't know. If, if my taste for carnivore don't improve over what they've been in the last few days, because all that stuff tastes terrible to me, then I will not stay carnivore. So this is a very, very weird video. It was all about the hip replacement recovery where I hope to show you I was a rock star like I was on my uh, knee replacement surgery recovery. I'll link that video below. But so far, so bad. <laughs> this is not too much fun. This is later in the day, about four o'clock, I guess, the day, the same day that I just told you about. And I realized, I, I do have COVID, by the way. I went to Walgreens. Alan and I both got a test. He was negative. Yay, Alan, he's so healthy. And I was positive, unfortunately, but I did talk to my doctor and I got some Paxlovid. I got that started and a steroid for five days. And I do feel better today than I did yesterday. So that's always a good thing. I did want to let you know, I learned something new in terms of the healing from the, the hip replacement. And that is, I have a friend who went through it in 2019. And I was feeling bad because I guess I thought that you have the hip replacement surgery and two days later, three days later, you're dancing and everything's great because it's supposedly better than a knee replacement. Well, while it may be better than a knee replacement, it is still major surgery. And today I am able to be up and walking. That's just fine. I decided to go back to the cane though because I do want the support just in case I would start to fall. I need the cane just for protection of the, the newly operated hip. But basically, it still feels, I still feel a little bit taller on that right side. But my friend Jane, who I talked to, who's been through this, said, you'll feel that way for a while, and then all of a sudden you won't. It'll, it'll feel better. So that's good to know. I'm going to trust in that. And there is a little bit of pressure now on my lower back. But as Jane said, it's not over till it's over. She said she really didn't experience total healing for four to six weeks. So I'm going to have patience. Okay, I've made it to day six. This is Thursday after the surgery, six days after the surgery. And I've been on my COVID medicine since yesterday and I'm actually feeling a heck of a lot better this morning. 
still taking the baby aspirin twice a day, as they said, that's super important to do. I also haven't restarted my supplements yet because I'm supposed to wait till my eight day visit with the doctor, which is actually next Tuesday. I think it's more like a 10 day visit, but whatever. And they'll tell me what, if any supplements I can continue for the next month or so, and then I'm, I'm clear. But I feel emotionally much better than I did yesterday. I actually got dressed in a clean outfit. These aren't PJs, little, uh, nice little t-shirt. This is a Uniglo t-shirt. I love this t-shirt, big beefy t-shirt. I've ordered these for about two years and they're great t-shirts. But anyway, that is beside the point. And in terms of how it all feels, I have absolutely no pain. And this morning was kind of a turning point for me because now instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to get up and walk to the kitchen and I think about things. And I mentioned I was going to start using my cane again and I did a little bit, but I think that was mostly, I needed that because due to the COVID, I just felt not quite all there. And now I feel good enough that instead of having to think that, oh, I've got to walk to the kitchen and I need to think about every step, now it's just kind of like normal walking. That being said though, that right operated hip still feels a little bit taller, but I do think it is improving my posture to have, I guess, the more proper alignment of that right hip because it had been worn down bone, bone on bone, I guess. So there is a little bit of pressure, not so much in the hip area, but in my lower back. And I had pain, a lot of pain in my lower back before the surgery. And in fact, I wondered if it was a low back problem or a hip problem. And I'm so glad we did the hip surgery and not anything to my back. One last one I'll tell you about real quickly though, involved my doctor. And I told you earlier in the video that I would tell you a little secret about him, but it is really crazy. And tell me in the comments section if you think I am right about this. I watched a really good movie called, This Is Where I Leave You. Yeah, This Is Where I Leave You. And there is a main character in there. One of the main supporting characters is a man, an actor named Corey Stahl. And then I looked up the actors in that movie and I was watching the movie and looking at a picture of Paul Papadimos online. And so you can see there Corey Stahl on one side and Dr. Paul Papadimos on the other side. And I started watching that movie last night and I'm like, who does that guy look like? He is so familiar, he is so familiar because he did both my knee and my hip replacements. And I felt like it was an omen to me that he was the perfect surgeon for me. So anyway, you know, it's kind of a funny thing, but tell me if you agree with that. One more thing I did want to tell you, I'm still not doing the carnivore. I still can't stand the idea of greasy cheeseburgers and steaks and all that, which is really weird because I really like them before the surgery. But I had really dropped in weight and so I'm eating gluten-free is what I'm doing basically. And at lunch, I'm going to have like a grilled cheese sandwich on gluten-free bread and tomato soup, which is wonderful, uh, from Trader Joe's. I'm looking forward to that. Hi everyone, this is the final day of my first week journey on the hip replacement, day seven. I can hardly believe I'm here. It was a week ago this morning at 8 a.m. that I had my hip replacement surgery and so I made it through the first seven days. I am still walking very well. It's getting to where I don't think, oh my gosh, I have to think about each step between you know the, the bed and the kitchen. I just get out there and walk and there's a little bit of discomfort still for sure. And my right hip still feels a little taller than the left hip, but I just need to give that time and patience. And I will give you a little update on the eating front. You know how I had stopped carnivore because I couldn't stand the food. And I'm hoping that was the COVID. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was. And I still, it doesn't sound really great to me, but my IBS has come back with a vengeance. So I am going to, I, I had Alan go to McDonald's and get me an unsweetened iced tea and six hamburger patties. And I'm even gonna back off cheese for a while. I was able to eat cheese on carnivore just fine, but I've gotten myself screwed up. I think particularly with all these gluten-free grains and oh my God, I excuse my language, but I was eating nachos last night, cheesy nachos. I mean, it's been junk, it's been total junk. And I've been very hungry on those carb-filled grains and you know bagels and all that stuff, which I don't like that either. I like the feeling better of being on carnivore. So I am going to head back at least to meat and vegetables. I don't know, it depends on you know how, how they taste for a few days. And I'm not saying for sure that I'm gonna be totally carnivore again. I could be ketovore, but I've certainly got to get to the point that I get rid of this IBS. 
So anyway, that is how it is on day seven. I'm not going to give you a thought for the day because I have learned so much through this experience, so much that I'm going to make a separate video about things I learned from this. Um, and I'm going to be pretty, pretty open with you in that video. And so if you're interested in learning a little more about me and my challenges and triumphs, we shall say, I, I had really nothing but positive come from this experience so far. And if you'd like a two week update on my second week post hip replacement surgery, let me know in the comments section because I would love to share that with you. And I do look forward to seeing you in my next video.